All right, this video is part two of the Sources tab in Chrome DevTools. Uh, if you're looking for information on workspaces and persisting changes to disk, uh, check out part one. Uh, this one's going to be finishing up sources and talking about step through debugging. Uh, so once again, I'm going to be using uh, this really simple app, little node app I made for demoing. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, check it out on my GitHub at github.com slash jcoop slash mastering Chrome DevTools. Uh, it's just a little site that looks like this is what we did to it, but I'm gonna go back through here and uh, get checkout force, and then I'm gonna run Node on it. So it actually looks like this nicer, uh, simple app. So we're gonna talk about uh, step through debugging now. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the dev tools and go to the sources tab. And this time I'm gonna kinda close this, I'm gonna move all this stuff over because we're gonna be looking at this right side of the screen, this, this last section here, this is the step through debugging. Uh, so basically what you've got going on here <clears throat> for those not familiar with the step through debugger, uh, it allows you to look at your code, set breakpoints, um, and a breakpoint is basically telling the computer whenever you're about to parse this line, halt all execution and give me you know some room to poke around, uh, check the value of certain things, all that kind of stuff. So I've got some remnants from other projects here, so I'm going to go ahead and delete these for now. And uh, this is a remnant from last time, so I'm going to remove this workspace. Um, Okay, so let's kind of start off here. Um, so what I've got is I built this little application and you enter a GitHub username like jcoop uh, and it should show you a list of that user's repositories. Uh, and so the idea here is trying to figure out, like a demonstration, trying to figure out what's going wrong, why we're getting this, uh-oh, we have a problem. Uh, and I'm going to take a little hint from the second video we made uh, talking about elements the elements panel and before I even start digging through the JavaScript I'm gonna pretend like I'm brand new to this project uh, and I have no idea where this is coming from and instead of looking JavaScript first I'm gonna look HTML first because I know that we're looking for what generates this uh oh um, we're having a problem string so what I'm gonna do is in the elements tab I'm gonna click on the containing element this repository li or ul and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do break on subtree modification. So what I'm looking for here is I want to set a breakpoint. Instead of setting it in the code, I'm setting it in the HTML to say whenever this starts changing, show me what it is that's doing that. And I'm going to add another character, jcoopk, and boom, it takes me back over to the sources tab. This lets me know that we're paused in the debugger. And I'm going to kind of drag this over a little bit so they're split. So we can see that what's writing to this is this remove any remaining nodes code here. So this isn't exactly what I want, right? Because this looks like it's clearing it before it writes to it again. And what I really want is what is writing this, uh-oh, we are having a problem. So in this case, since I don't want this uh, area, I'm going to go ahead and hit play, which is going to play it through until the next time that code is written to. Um, So now we can see here that we're inside what looks to be maybe jQuery, um, and we're doing a, a, an append child of some element. So this is really great. There's a lot going on here. So let's take a minute and look through it. We can ignore, safely ignore this all this whole section on the left because that's not necessary. Uh, we can see in blue where we're broken right now, where our breakpoint is set, where we're frozen. We can see over here a call stack. So again, for those new to step through debugging, this is basically we are paused here in this anonymous function um, and the way we got here is dominip called it jquery extend append called that so it's basically you know if you have like a function foo that calls bar that calls baz the call stack would be you know baz bar foo basically so you can really step through uh, and see what's going on a really useful thing to do here is to look at what file is calling it right because if you have a problem with your code chances are jQuery is not the culprit. You don't want to be digging into the jQuery code, you want to be digging into your code that you wrote. And so Chrome DevTools provides you a really great way of doing that and it's called black boxing scripts. And a black box of script just means like, hey, this is some library, chances are I never want to be in here, so don't even stop in here, don't even break in here, because that's not what I want. And all you got to do is you got to right click on a script and click black box it. And so that's cool, you can see it kind of fades all these out now. Uh, so I always do this if you have Lodash or underscore, jQuery, React, JS, you know, any any library where you're pretty sure the problem is not coming from there, go ahead and black box those. 
Um, so now we're left with just these two areas and we've got an Ajax call to error and we've got this insert error code, which is probably what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and you can see this relationship where you can click on areas and it changes in the sources tab, not only what file is showing, um, but exactly where that code is. So this is really, really powerful stuff. Um, this will make debugging even in a large application so much easier than you know putting console logs all over the place. Um, so we find this insert error and boom, that's exactly what we're looking for. Uh-oh, we're having a problem. So now my question is why, like what called insert error? You know, why is it that we're having a problem? Um, and so I can just look what called insert error, what's one level back in the call stack? So I click on this ajax.error. And here we can start seeing some pretty familiar code, right? Where it's like we're doing this ajax call and we have a success uh, function which iterates through data. So this is where we'd like to be. And we've got this error um, which is calling insert error. So now the question is why is it that um, data is having an error? And what we can do here is we can kind of start taking a peek at what's inside data. Uh, for those that haven't done jQuery before, it'll give you an error message somewhere in this object of you know, why it is that it's not reaching. So they have this nice little modal, this little hover over here. So you can kind of click through and start um, you know, seeing, seeing what it is that's going on. Um, but I kind of prefer, instead of using that, to come over here and above call stack, we have this watch area. So watch expressions are basically, you can put in any kind of uh, you know, variable that's active at the time and it'll tell you what's in it. And it'll, if you were to keep clicking play through, every time it stops, it'll check it again to see if it's changed what it's set to now. So I can go ahead and click on and enter data and it tells me data is an object and I can kind of come through here. And what I'm looking for here out of this jQuery object is the response text, what's wrong? Um, so response text, um, you'll notice it's really huge. So what I would go ahead and do is I go back up to the top and instead of looking at data, all I really want is data response text. Boom. All right, so now data response text is not found. Documentation URL is not found. So now we know why this thing's failing. It's getting a not found uh, on the URL that we're going for. So I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit for you know brevity here. Um, I think that it's like I had a little trick in here or something like that where it's supposed to be users instead. So let's go ahead and um, check that playing it through. Still having a problem. I'm going to go ahead and check out my debugging code here. Um, so yeah, we want users instead. And let's see. Hoping that we get into here. Pop back into my editor for a second. Go into debugging.js. Uh, I think it's supposed to be users-user-repo. I'll check on that in one second if it's still failing. Type in my username. Okay, so now we're getting a different thing. We're getting these undefines. Um, and you could do a really similar thing. You could be like, okay, well, what's populating those undefines? Uh, inspect it. Watch for changes on subtree modifications. Type a little something. And eventually what you're going to find is... Um, we're iterating through all the repos, and then I think it's, uh, inst you know, what you find is instead of repo.title, it's like repo.name or something like that. Um, just for brevity, I kind of wanted to save time on that, but I just wanted to show you, here we go, now it's listing all my repos, uh, how you can use step through debugging and breakpoints and watch expressions, call stacks, all that good stuff to really help make your uh, code debugging a lot faster. So I hope that was helpful. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover again, just let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to make a more specific video. I know that was a lot of stuff to cover.